What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I have a review kind of video where I'm just going to tell you if Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks, the graphic novel, is worth the hype. I did this once before with Sadie by Courtney Summer, so I will have that in the cards above and down below if you would like to go and watch it and know if that is worth the hype, which it is. It's worth the hype, but if you need more convincing, go over to that video. So your friendly contemporary graphic novel booktuber is here to tell you if Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks is worth the hype. This is all spoiler free, so don't worry about that, but if you have been wanting to pick it up, I will tell you if you should or not. Just a disclaimer that this video isn't me telling you don't read this book. Um because I'm not like that. I wouldn't tell you that unless it's a book that you really shouldn't read. Good, so I would not recommend, like honestly, I want to advocate for no one to pick this up and I would never do that, but please don't pick this up. It's not good. It's not, the representation is not good and I just don't want anyone to read this book. Just a disclaimer that I'm not telling you not to read this. Um, that's your own opinion. That's your own choice. Go for it. I'm not here to tell you don't read this book. Um, but I just had a different opinion and I thought I would talk about it because I don't really see... I mean, I've seen some mixed reviews for it, but I haven't seen anyone really talking about it the way I will. So here we go. Also, Rainbow Rowell, I like her. She's a good author and I like to read her books. So I'm not trying to cancel her. She has already been canceled by somebody else and that's not me. <laughs> so um, I really love her and I don't want any hate about Rainbow Rowell because I know that there's stuff going on or has gone on and I'm not here to talk negatively about any of these authors. I really love Faith Erin Hicks too. Her book, um, Friends with Boys is really good. Highly recommend. Anyway, let's get into the video of me telling you if this is worth the hype or not. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you haven't for more bookish videos. Let's get started. I am here to tell you if this book is worth the hype or not. And in my personal opinion, I don't think so. I think that the hype was way too much. I went into this book with high expectations. I was like, yo, this is gonna be so good, so cute, I'm excited, fall. So I can understand why people are really enjoying this and why it's hyped. Because first, it's Rainbow Rowell. She's the queen and anyone is going to read her because we love her. Um, some people don't, that's fine. <laughs> um, also, just having like a fall graphic novel, like the cover screams fall and you're like, oh, this is gonna be so cute, can't wait. If you are trying to fulfill a reading challenge that is fall themed, this book would be perfect and I actually did that for Spooktober. Um, so I am guilty as charged, but I think that it just wasn't worth the hype and I went into this book with high expectations because Rainbow Rowell is awesome and I love her. And then I was just really let down and I was like, I have to do a worth the hype video and now we're here. So that is my reasoning on why this may be worth the hype for some people. For me personally, it's not worth the hype. And here's why. <laughs> First off, I gave this a three and a half out of five stars. That's probably the lowest rating I've ever given to a Rainbow Rowell book. T. <laughs> oh, I should probably also say that, that I'm like not trying to spill the tea or anything. I hope, like, I'm sure that people that are already like subscribers and watch my videos consistently know that I'm not someone who usually spills the tea unless it's for a joke. So yeah, I'm not trying to spill the tea. So honestly, if you're looking for tea, bye, because I am not about that. So I have four points and I'm just gonna go in order. So the first point is that the story was rushed. If you don't know what the story is, Basically, this is about Josiah and Deja, and they have been working at this pumpkin patch for four years. Like, they're just the whole remainder of their high school career. They graduated, and this is their last day at work. And Josiah has never had a girlfriend, and he is awkward talking to girls. And honestly, I feel him. <laughs> I relate to him. 
on a spiritual level. <laughs> but besides that, um, the whole thing is that he likes this girl that works at the FUD shop and he is trying to, he's been trying to talk to her this whole time and just, just never has. And so then Deja thinks that it would be a good idea for Josiah to tell this girl that he likes her on the last day of him working there because then he'll never see her again. Um, and so yes, that sounds like a good story, but it wasn't executed in the way I would have liked to. Like, honestly, I could think of so many ways I could have fixed this. Basically, it felt like these two authors were not forced to write this, but I know that there are some times in publishing where um, a publisher tells the author to write a certain book and that's what this felt like. So it kind of felt like they were not, like not forced to read it, but were on a strict deadline and didn't really get to put all their effort into this book. Um, and <laughs> I don't know, like it just felt really rushed to me. There was not a lot of context. Like you're kind of learning a little bit, but you don't get to learn much. Um, you don't really get to know much about the characters. Like I could tell you like what they're like, but I don't know much more that is like background knowledge. Like what are they going to school for? What like how, like how did they, they kind of talk about how they met, but like briefly in like a flashback thing where they're just like sitting at the s'mores pit and they're like, ah, oh, we met here. But then I don't know, like there's just, I could not even tell you anything about their friendship. And then the ending was rushed. Like honestly, this just felt really rushed to me and I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I'm making this video because I was disappointed. Is this just a rant review at this point? Probably. Next is that I got anxiety reading this because the whole premise is that they're at work, but they don't work at all. They, at the beginning of the book, they ditch the place that they're supposed to be working and um, I didn't like that. Like it's the busiest day of the year it was like Halloween or something like that. And they are just like, oh, it's cool, YOLO. It's our last day of work. But like, you could have just come here when you're not working and like did all this stuff. Like Deja wanted to try all the foods, but like, why would you do that on the clock when like you're busy and you just abandoned the pumpkin palace or whatever the hell it's called? Um, I didn't like that and it gave me anxiety because I was like, okay, uh, they're missing work. Don't like that. Um, and then there's like people struggling around them and they're like, oh, whatever, good luck. But then Josiah is like king of the pumpkin patch basically. Like he just loves work. He? <laughs> Maybe that's why he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, uh, like that's a little weird to me, but I mean, I'm not gonna like call out his character or anything, but I just felt weird about that whole situation. And I was like, I don't like this, that they're just like, oh, well, they're not gonna fire us. Haha. -ha, yeah. But like, then if, I don't know, like, I guess because I'm just like an adult, I'm thinking of this from like an adult perspective where I'm just like, yo, you can't do that. You just can't, just don't do it. Should just not show up for work then if you're just not gonna work. I don't get it. Um, so that is another like issue. And I guess that kind of also like goes back to my first point where I'm just like, this was rushed. Um, and the story could have been changed a lot. And I am trying so hard not to spoil it. I'm sorry if this is just becoming a rant review, but the third point is that I can't believe I'm actually saying this because I am, I love puns, but my third point is that there were unnecessary fudge puns. <laughs> and that is just my personal preference that I'm just like, um, I love Ray Morrell because her, like, her writing is quirky, um, her dialogue is quirky and funny and it makes me laugh and I was, like, laughing out loud while reading it. But there are just so many fudge puns <laughs> and 
stop it three it just kept being excessive and repetitive and I'm just like oh haha ha, I get it um please move on and pick something else because I am sick of the fudge puns. <laughs> After the book ends, just there's a couple pages and it's conversations with Rainbow and Faith. I guess it was like an interview kind of thing. I kind of skimmed it because I was really over the book by the time I was done and I just really wanted to get out of my sight. But there is a part where Rainbow actually says that they wanted to create this story that was Disneyland but pumpkin patch. So there was like a bunch of different foods, which I really thought was cool. Like honestly, pumpkin bomb, I really want one. And I low key like wanna try to find out how to make one and like make a video because that would be so cool. Um, it's basically like a pumpkin pie with like ice cream or something. It looked cool. So I will give them that. Like honestly, that whole concept was cool, but if it were executed differently and like better, it would be cool. Like that was so cool. Like if it, they would have just pitched it like that, like in the blurb, if it was just that, that would have sold everyone. Um, but then they probably would have opened the book and been like really disappointed. <laughs> so uh, maybe it's better off that they didn't put that in there. Okay, so the final point is gonna have some minor spoilers. So if you just don't want to pick up this book and you just want to know what happens, stay. Like I'll put like a time on the screen um, for you to know when the spoilers are over and you can hear like my conclusion and everything. But if you are gonna be spoiled or you have read the book, hi. Um, here we go. Here's my problem. The book was predictable. I mean, I guess that's just like, I guess I should have just known that going into it, but um, I don't know. I just felt like really let down at the end because I was like, okay, cool. This is like a goose chase for this girl. <laughs> and then um, we meet her and she sucks. She's horrible. Marcy, we don't like her. And she was so unlikable. Also, we know nothing about her because this guy just never talk to her and like that was weird to me because it's like you see this girl from afar you know nothing about her and then you're just like okay I like her for four years and then you just never talk to her I mean I guess that that is like realistic in like teenage culture and I'm sure I've maybe have done that before as I'm discussing this book I'm just learning that Josiah was creepy like now that's another point is that Josiah was creepy like he saw this girl from afar and he was like yo I like her and then he just never did anything about it and like wait what if like she had a boyfriend like he did not even think about that it was like yeah we're gonna get married with I love her and doesn't know anything about her has never talked to her in his life saw her once and was like yeah I like her like what if how do you even know she was there um, honestly, maybe I would have liked that ending better that like she just wasn't there, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It was like just kind of like silly when every time they would go and then somebody would be like, oh no, she's not here anymore. Haha, -ha, you have to go here. Like we're going down like the, we're in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but... <laughs> But yeah, Rainbow Rail and Faith Aaron Hicks just really disappoint us at the end when we're like, yeah, I love Josiah. Him and Marcy are gonna get together. And then we meet her and she's just like, I hate it here. I'm so glad I'm never gonna come back here again. Josiah's like, oh my God. It's kind of like when, it kind of felt like the Grinch. Like he literally meets this girl and he's like, what? You don't like Halloween? Like you don't like October? Like you hate pumpkin? Like what? Um, and then he like goes to, um, be, then he like, then he confesses his love for Deja, who I think was possibly bisexual, like something like that. I have no idea, but if you have read the book, let me know. Um, I know she was like on the queer spectrum somewhere. Um, but I don't know like I just didn't really get any signs of that and then I was just like ooh, this is awkward and then they kiss and I was like what is happening there is just no need for this at all so I was super disappointed by the end because I'm just like oh 
I like wasted my time, wasted my time because I was like, okay, I just wanted to see this happen and then I didn't. And I was, it was just dumb. Like, well, they wasted their own time, wasted my time by doing that. And by no means am I like bashing the book and I hope that's like not how this is coming off, but I'm just kind of a little <laughs> ticked off about the book.